Hello, hello. There it goes. I just was informed by YouTube that we can broadcast for eight hours. So hope you guys cleared your schedules for the rest of the night because we're going to hang. No, I'm just kidding. This will be about 45 minutes to an hour. And in case you don't know, I'm Allie. I'm Matt. What up? We are here in Colorado, freezing our butts off, obviously. For real life. Keep the heat low. <laughs> but that's not what you're here for. Our stupid jokes, that is not what you're here for. You're here because you want to stay sexy and get out of debt. So let's get started. What do you think? Let's do it. You ready? Yep. Alrighty. So we're going to sh screen here. share. Matt's just checking to make sure we are broadcasting. We are. And if you have comments, I will hopefully see them. Yeah. Comment on the little box below. It's purple. If you have any questions, and we'll answer them at the end. Alrighty. So let's do this screen share, baby. Whoa. Trippy. You are screen sharing. Present to everyone. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. You just got to go to this. Oh. That looks trippy. Why is it freaking out like that? Sorry, guys. You know, just some technical difficulties. Okay. Here, this is what we want. Is it? Yeah, it's going to work. Okay. It's going to work. We got this. So slide, start show. No, sh present. Okay. You guys, this is not our first rodeo, although it might seem like it. Bear with us. Um, oh, shoot. It's like presenting automatically. <laughs> I, think so. I think maybe you just clicked. Oh, you think? Yeah. Just okay. I thought it was just going. I don't and I was so. like, um, no, I don't want it to just go. Okay. I don't think so. All right. Hang with us here, team. Um, but yeah, you're not going to see our faces for a little bit. We'll show you our faces at the end. Um, but because you know, I know you, I know you that's know. what you guys came for. You already seen them. Yeah, <laughs> they're not that cute. Uh, so yeah, here we are, staying sexy, getting out of debt. Bonus points, whoever knows where they came from. Yep, it's our favorite podcast. Maybe my favorite podcast that I forced Matt to listen to, but that's yeah, that's good. I'm okay <laughs> with it. You hear the enthusiasm in his voice, you guys. All right. So who are we? We are financial coaches and educators. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's us. This summer warrior on our road trip in our van. So some of you may know us from that mm -hmm. and from Clifford. In fact, we're currently in Colorado. Yeah. Um, because of fact number two, because we're outdoor fanatics. Mm -hmm. We were engineers before. We still are. We still have our engineering degree. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. We were practicing engineers mm -hmm. before. Yeah. And yeah, you can see us on CNBC and Kiplinger, Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, some of those places. Yeah, some other places. That is not our dog. No, it's my sister's dog. Mm -hmm. She's pretty cute, though. We dog sat for like six months, and it was the best. I miss her every day. But one day, we'll have one. So, if you have only been on this webinar for five minutes and you already love it, Share with your social media friends. If you want to wait to just test the waters to make sure we're still cool after 45 minutes, then wait. Share it then. Yeah, share it then. But we are hashtag own your debt or at own your future is where we hang out on the Instagram. And you want to make sure you stay until the end because we're going to give away some stuff. So we'll have a link to our monthly money meeting framework mm -hmm. uh, which we haven't handed out before super useful tool to make sure you're doing the right things every month and staying in touch with your money we're also going to offer an opportunity for you to master your money destroy your debt and achieve financial freedom own your debt that's our official verbiage as you have to say it like that every time we say gotcha. it. okay i'll try so you're in the right place if any of this sounds like you you feel out of control with your money and you really want to get out of debt but you're unsure of where to start and you just feel overwhelmed by the thought of what next step to take where you should be um, putting your money how you to decrease your expenses and increase your income you just kind of want someone to help you with that 
And you also want to have more financial freedom to maybe travel or pursue your passions or live uh, your ideal life, whatever that is to you. Uh, you just want more freedom. So a little bit about our story, if you're not familiar with us, we went from living basically the normal American life, living paycheck to paycheck, to making a radical shift and ending up saving about 70% of our incomes. Woo -woo. As I said, we were engineers. <laughs> we were helped out that we had a pretty high income to start with, but us and all of our peer group were consistently spending those big paychecks every yeah. single month. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's something that happens almost regardless of what pay scale you're in. Mm -hmm. So we were able to break that cycle and start saving a significant chunk of our income. And after saving for four years, we quit our jobs and now pursue our passions full time, which mm -hmm. is, you know, outdoor adventures, running this business, and we have another business as well. So. Yeah, we have a keto food company in case you guys want to know about that other business. We do that too. So we're just, you know. We're a lot of hats. We're really into hats. So what was our turning point? And this took a while. It doesn't happen overnight, although I wish I could sprinkle a magical potion on you and you reach this turning point. It takes a lot of work. Um, but basically getting clear on the vision and direction and how we want to feel about our life. And it's still, we're still pivoting and trying to make more choices that align with our ideal life. So it's kind of a lifelong journey um, because being complacent and satisfied isn't like really us. We're always trying to improve ourselves and our situation. Um, so maybe that's like you too. You're always trying to improve your situation and um, improve yourself. So. With that being said, we realized our finances weren't aligning with our values and we were spending a lot of money on booze, restaurants, expensive trips that felt stressful because of the money. And that's not what vacation is supposed to be about. So we eventually became financially empowered and that gave us the freedom to be able to pursue what really aligns with our values and our passions and help to discover our passions because we're still discovering passions now on this journey. So we are going to share this, these techniques with you uh, that kind of got us to this point right now. So to cover today's agenda, these are the things that really form the foundation of kind of our process to financial freedom and our journey to financial freedom that we went through and how we help other people walk that same path. So the three steps are first, starting with mindset. The second step is nuts and bolts or more of the technical aspect, you know, the nitty gritty, how do you do the, the techniques and strategies that we're gonna show you. And then step three is projections, which helps you know you're on the right path and know how long it'll take you to get to your goals. Then we're gonna introduce our course, Own Your Debt, and then we're gonna have some time for Q&A. So stick around, it's about to get lit. All right, so how would your life change if any of this happened in your life? You felt in control of your money and on track to achieve your financial goals. How good would that feel? How amazing would it feel if conversations about money left you feeling empowered and positive and hopeful and excited for your financial future? And how would it feel if you had a specific plan to pay down your debt and knew exactly when that debt pay down was going to occur and when you would reach financial freedom? That would feel pretty dang good, right? Definitely. Well, if that sounds great <laughs> to you, you're in the right place. If you have any questions during our presentation, mm -hmm. make sure to type them into the chat box. Yeah. I have it up on my other computer. Keeping tabs on it. Pew pew. And we'll make sure to address those um, either right while we're talking or we'll save them for the QA at the end, but depends how relevant your cues are. True, true. All right. So, bum, bum, bum. Here's the meat, the secret sauce, the goodies. Number one, mindset. 
take it away, Matt. So why is mindset important? And why do we start with mindset on this journey to financial freedom? We like to use the example of going to the gym. Mm -hmm. You can want to work out and want to have these goals to like, you know, hit the gym. We, we're just starting in the beginning of the year, right? So yeah. some of you might have New Year's resolutions to like get fit, eat mm -hmm. right, you know, do these things that everyone knows like how to get fit and how to be right. healthy. Like you eat good food, that like grew from the ground and you mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. It's really simple, but it's really hard to do in yeah. actuality. It's really easy to fall for, you know, extra helping of dessert and Yum. like, no, nah, I'd rather watch Netflix and catch up on Stranger Things than, <laughs> you know, go to the gym right now. So the mindset and getting your mindset right around money is the same way. You have to really iron that piece out mm -hmm. so that you don't get derailed by these conveniences. Like, oh, I just want to buy this little thing because yeah. it makes me feel good. Um, like retail therapy mm -hmm. or whatever challenges you're having around money, a lot of it's linked back to your mindset because mm -hmm. you know what you should be doing with your money, should be saving it, should be like yeah. using it to achieve your goals and also bring you joy. But a lot of times we don't do that in actuality because there's all these other little things pulling at us from advertisements and yep. everything else. So mindset first, because without mindset, you're going to get derailed mm -hmm. every single time. True, true. So what might be holding you back from achieving your financial goals is that mindset, those unconscious habits and patterns that you don't know are defining you and how to rebuild healthy habits and train yourself to have good patterns around money is first understanding your past and how it might be affecting your present. So an example of a client that we've worked with is they realized through our exercises that they were overspending significantly because as a child, every time they received money, whether um, you know an allowance or a gift, their parents took their money from them and they never got it. And then when their parents also told them that they would have a college fund and whenever they went to college, all of that money had been spent. And so to them, they, they see this money that they have now as something that needs to be spent right away. Otherwise it will get taken from you. So it took really understanding why they were the way they are and going back to some of their childhood uh, traumas and experiences to uncover that that's really powerful and that's what we want for all of you too because even if you think you have the healthiest you know past rule you know you don't have any money trauma we all do and doing this work has shown up a lot of our own matt and i's own um unconscious money habits and patterns that sabotage us and we're working on that still Definitely. So. I mean, they're super elusive and sneaky because mm -hmm. they're so ingrained because of like a past childhood experience. It's yeah. not something that you think about. It's just some way that you react mm -hmm. automatically. Um, maybe like when a topic of money comes up between you and your partner yeah. or a boyfriend, girlfriend, um, and you get anxious or yeah. like automatically defensive because you learn that that's how money gets talked about in your household because of the way your parents talked about money mm -hmm. or something like that. So it's like not something that we consciously think of it's just something that's running in the background all the time yeah so by jumping in digging deep and exposing these things we can at least become aware of them which is like the first step to moving past them and reacting in the way that you want mm -hmm. next time you're in that same situation totally so think of your ideal life think of the goals and the more specific you get the more real it gets and so once you have that picture of your ideal life, and we do this within our course, we help you to reverse engineer to really determine what your values are. Because we found that a lot of people, we ask like what their values are, and they have no idea. I mean, just four years ago, we didn't know what our values were until we really thought, got clear about what our ideal life looked like and then determined what values and habits and patterns support that lifestyle. 
So yeah, basically without a direction, you can't pave a path. So getting really clear on your direction will put you in the right direction automatically. Yeah. And then we definitely want to talk about what about when shit happens. <laughs> shit hits the fan it sometimes. Definitely does. Mm -hmm. um, 2018 was a lot of that for us. Yeah, if you um, watch our watch our YouTube video, 2018, <clears throat> money wins and fails. You saw some of our struggles for sure. So it has been a struggle, um, but like a lot of this stuff feels like just you know kind of random events. Yeah. And, Sometimes those things are gonna feel like a really big deal, like a total derailment. You're gonna lose a bunch of money in an investment. We you're felt gonna, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're gonna have something stolen from you. You're gonna make a bad decision, wreck a car, like mm -hmm. have a bunch of medical bills and have to like dig yourself out of mm -hmm. a hole again. Yeah. And it can be even more difficult when you already kind of are in a hole mm -hmm. and then you get set backwards and you're like, why even try to keep digging myself out because yeah. I keep falling back. Mm -hmm. But the truth is if you learn the financial truths, then you can speak to these lies mm -hmm. and not let those take a hold of you when you're faced with a difficult situation because continuing to act in alignment with your goals is what's going to get you out of that hole. Even if you take two steps forward and one step back, eventually you'll get there, but you have to make sure that when you get hit and you take that one step back, you don't say, Fuck it. <laughs> it's all ruined. Yeah. And then you just spiral back down um, because then it's even harder to pull yourself back out of. Mm -hmm. Truth. So some tools you can implement now that can help you. Surprisingly, visualization. So really, when you're in that moment of shitting hit the fan, <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit hitting the fan, not shitting on the fan. Don't Sorry. do it to yourself. No, <laughs> try not to. Um, visualize. Keep that ideal life in your mind and do a vision board. I did one just a month ago because I was feeling really disconnected from our ideal life and what we really want. And remind yourself because we humans, we forget easily and we get lost in the day-to-day we get lost in the um, victim mindset, in the all these bad things are happening to me, I can't get out. But we have the power to pull, up, pull ourselves out of that through tools like visualization. And through thinking of examples of times you've acted counter to whatever belief is coming up. So for instance, if you your belief is that you will always overspend, well, think of a time when you've saved money for something that you really wanted. And um, think of a time when you were able to make ends meet every month for two months or three months and, you know, had some extra spending money to put in savings. So think of a time you've been counter to whatever limiting belief is popping up to try to derail you. For sure. All right, so that was the mindset piece. That is, I think, the most important piece. For sure. It is the foundation. Yeah. Why we start with it. Like we said, if you don't have that right, then implementing these tools and techniques and yeah. strategies will show you. Um, you just won't have the consistency, mm -hmm. I think, to stick with it. And the journey to debt freedom or financial freedom is a long game. Everything mm -hmm. with money is a long game. So you have to make sure you stay on top of it for the long haul. Totally. And our course will walk you and guide you through step by step how to really retrain your mindset. So Definitely. this is just we go into a lot of depth yeah. in the course. Mm -hmm. um, that was just kind of a overview of yeah. the fundamentals. Totally. And then we'll bump into the second piece, which is nuts and bolts. You like my sound, sound effects? Sound effects included. <laughs> I like it. So the first thing when you think of the technical aspect of your financial situation is your budget. So with budgeting, we want to talk about why budgeting. You just have a brain fart. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I was like reading the whole slide, like prepping my path here. All right. Um, so we want to talk about why 
budgeting shouldn't be the first step and why you should just jump in with any old budget. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I mean, is that yeah. not everyone likes to work with the same type of budget, yeah. not everyone's lifestyle or life circumstances lend mm -hmm. itself to the same type of budget. There's different things that work for different people. Mm -hmm. So it's important to kind of either test some things out or at least evaluate them and see what works best for you. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to cover a few different types. There's the cash envelope budget. This was really popularized by Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. um, cut up your credit cards, put the money in an envelope at the beginning of the month. That envelope is what you have to spend. You're not allowed to dip in anything else. Um, it is very rigid. Mm -hmm. which can work well if you're still struggling through some of those mindset pieces, finding yourself mm -hmm. acting in ways that you don't want to be acting. Mm -hmm. This helps put some barriers between you, mm -hmm. which can help you kind of stay on track. Mm -hmm. um, the bare bones budget, this is like in times of emergency, you lost your yeah. job. It's always good to know what your bare bones budget is, mm -hmm. even though you're probably not going to live at this uh, level of spending yeah. all the time. But in case shit hits the fan and you need to reduce your expenses to like the bare minimum, it's always really good to understand what that is mm -hmm. and what things are going to get cut out. Like what's yep. the first things to go um, and what are the bare essentials going to cost you? Mm -hmm. So a time-based budget is basically like budgeting for two weeks, budgeting for a month. You could budget based on when you get paid. You know, I'll have this money for two weeks or for a month. Or whatever special events is like planning for a wedding mm -hmm. kind of budgets on top of your normal monthly mm -hmm. budget or normal household budget saving yeah up for a vacation or saving up for yeah up paying for a wedding yeah like that. yeah and then there's zero based budgeting which is pretty popular in the finance community mm -hmm. and that's basically just making sure that every single dollar you make each month is allocated to something mm -hmm. and some of that can be or a lot of that can be allocated towards paying off debt, or mm -hmm. if you're out of debt, it can be allocated towards saving. But either way, there's no just like money floating around. Out yeah, there. like it's <laughs> all has a home, and mm -hmm. you know where it's going. Um, and again, similar to like the cash envelope, that just helps keep you on track because yeah. your money has a home. There's no just like you know Flailing. slush fund hanging yeah. out where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna spend this. <laughs> So oh, those are some really popular methods, but our method that we created is called the joy-based budget because it's really helped us. And it's basically a look back budget. And every month you have a monthly money meeting, which we will talk about in the course more uh, about the framework. And we also have the checklist to and the worksheet at the end of this for you to download. Um, but basically you, look back on your month and question each expense as a joy or a regret. So you're really focused on the quality of your experiences. So if you look back on your month and you saw you spent, you know, a hundred bucks on going out to movies and, but movies are what really bring you joy. And that is your favorite thing to do. Then that's okay. And that can be a joy, you know? Um, and you can say yes to that. Um, but for instance, if you felt obligated to buy a gift for a coworker and you didn't want to, and it felt weird because you didn't really know the coworker, but you just did it because you felt like you had to, then that might be a regret. And maybe next month when something like that happens, you'll be able to say, you know what? No, it's not in my budget this month. And I'll give you a card, you know, a handwritten card. And um, that is just as meaningful to many people or to at least the people that we want to hang out with. <laughs> for sure. So yeah, this method is what works for us, but it's okay if it doesn't work for you. Um, you kind of need to try a few options to see what fits with your lifestyle and your income, if it's consistent or not, that also affects things. For sure. Yeah, there's a lot of factors um, mm -hmm. that you need to account for. Like we talked mm -hmm. about the mindset piece. Some people want a more rigid budget. Yeah. This is a more loose budget because you're not even necessarily budgeting for that month. Yeah. Um, but what we find is after you do this process, um, it starts to reinforce your behaviors in yeah. the current month. Mm -hmm. So you're you're cutting expenses in certain areas because you looked back on last month and you're like, oh, you know what? This didn't really make me as happy as um, 
it should have or could have yeah. if I spent this money in a different area or if I saved it. So it does impact your your money habits yeah. and your expenses, but it's not as rigid and mm -hmm. confining as say like a cash envelope budget or something yeah. like that. So some people need that. Some people want something that's a little more loose and fluid. So this worked really well for us, mm -hmm. but yeah. Maybe it'll work for you. You too. do you. So yeah, the monthly money meetings we briefly touched on, um, but there's the monthly money workbook, which will open up real quick. Sorry, we have so many tabs open. I know it looks like trying to do a lot. We are. Um, so this is basically what we go through every single month. And now that we've been doing this for four years, we don't use the worksheets because we just talk through everything we know what we need to talk through but this is where we recommend for you guys to start um so really just get reflective on last month's goals this setting an intention is our clients favorite especially clients who sometimes have anxiety um, towards money and having conversations around money so setting an intention for the meeting why are you having this meeting how do you want to feel and what would you like to get out of it? And having both people express their reasons and what they're feeling. Also, if you have your phone on, like Matt does, make well, sure to put it on silent. They probably didn't hear it. <laughs> so yeah, in these meetings, we just pull up our last month's expenses and go through the joy and regrets, or joy, unexpected, and regrets. And then you review your total saving and expenses. And if you track your net worth, which is a great idea, you fill that in and then challenge yourself two to three things that you could improve on. And so, you know, we recommend doing this with your spouse if you or your partner, if you have one. Um, but if not, it's just as powerful on your own. So, yeah. So something that we get asked a lot is kind of how to maintain a social life when you start cutting expenses or you're deciding, Hey, you know what, going out to happy hour after work, like three days a week is really just a drain on my budget I'd rather yeah. pay off that debt. But then you also feel like you're, you know, separating yourself mm -hmm. from your friends. friends or coworkers. So the biggest thing is just to communicate with your friends about your goals and dreams, mm -hmm. because if they're true friends, they're going to totally root for you and be like, you know what, yep. that is awesome that you're trying to like improve your financial situation and get mm -hmm. debt free or, you know, save up this money for this cool event or for retirement. Yeah. And if they don't, then they're not really good friends because there will be some friends who be like, what? Like, don't do that. The naysayers yeah. are always there. They always are because you're changing the status quo and that makes them question and be, feel threatened. You took the words out of my mouth by changing slides. Boom. Feel threatened by you pursuing your own goals. So it kind of puts a mirror up and makes them question if they are really pursuing their own goal, um, which a lot of people don't like. So expect the naysayers. It's normal, unfortunately, to receive negative feedback, even from loved ones, even from people who are close to you. And it is painful. Um, but our recommendation is to find a community that supports and encourages you on your path. So whether that's us, which we have an awesome community, or <laughs> I'm like memorized this. <laughs> we have it's an awesome the slide changing points. <laughs> the slides themselves. Yeah. <laughs> You can join ours. It's pretty uh, kick-ass if we do say so ourselves. Um, but definitely find a community in person too because there's something you know magical about being in person that is hard to connect online as well. So we recommend meetup.com, conferences related to things you're interested in. For sure. And it doesn't have like to be that. like financial. No. Like we mentioned we're outdoor enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll talk a little bit about stuff we like to do um that's yeah. Google and free. yeah i think that's the next slide <laughs> yeah goal friendly activities <laughs> you're killing it yeah. we're killing it so <laughs> we joined like a hiking group on mm -hmm. meetup that like mm -hmm. goes on a hike every saturday there's like mountain biking groups um even if you don't like you know getting outside and hiking if you like playing chess or mm -hmm. like playing board games or like doing anything else yeah um, there's pretty much a group of people who also like that so 
totally. find some people who are into similar activities as you and our goal friendly activities are basically all free mm -hmm. or cheap um inviting people over for a home cooked meal great way to like connect and bond with people mm -hmm. instead of going out to a restaurant it's even more like personal yeah um like conversations usually a lot deeper and better we mm -hmm. find um and it's definitely more personal if you just invite like another couple or something like yeah. that if you have a spouse we like i said we do a lot of stuff outside going hiking going on a bike ride you could do game nights you're not in yeah. the game outside um we used to give blood in exchange for free movie <laughs> tickets. The blood bank in our hometown of Bakersfield, where we were living, is not hometown, previous town. <laughs> um, yeah, I gave away a bunch of free swag if you yeah. give some blood, which also, you know, saved somebody life. So that was pretty cool. You some, go swimming. Something that's not mentioned here is volunteering, which is something we've intentionally tried to do More of, yeah. in this season of our life right now. And yeah, today we went and volunteered with the horses that uh, work with kids with autism and veterans with PTSD. And I I know you guys might know this too. I love horses. And <laughs> just being around them calms me. And, you know, I don't have to go out and spend, you know, $20,000 to buy a horse. Or, you know, like a lot of people would be like, okay, you love horses, you have to buy a horse. Or, you know, you love horses, you have to pay for its food and board it every month. Like, no, if you love something, you can find a way to do it that is sustainable for your goals too, so. For sure, that's a good point. Yeah. So part of budgeting in this virtuous cycle of mm -hmm. reviewing your finances is making an attempt to decrease your expenses mm -hmm. and increase your joy at the same time. Mm -hmm. So. Your living expenses are normally the biggest expense and some of these are the hardest to change this is where you live your food groceries mm -hmm. usually like your car transportation um and there's a lot of other little stuff tacked in there um internet yeah. phone insurance all of these things like you need to have um so some of those things are really hard to change so like yeah. your amount of rent or mortgage payment um there can be a lot of inertia there but sometimes changing those things will mm -hmm. have a really big impact too so worth pursuing groceries are typically like a second thing um we try to eat really healthy so we actually spend quite a bit on groceries mm -hmm. um but always something that we're kind of like keeping a tab on every month how do we do versus last month and see if there's you know favorite meals that are cheap, cheap. so definitely cut the small stuff trips mm -hmm. to starbucks like um, things you can make coffee at home. It's just as good, most likely. Yeah. Uh, so Maybe things better. that are, yeah, things that are easy to replace um, with a minimal change in like convenience. Mm -hmm. Those things should probably go because you can get just as much joy from something less expensive. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to really pay the premium. Totally. And then we have insourcing, mm -hmm. which you know, do as much as you can for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube is your best friend. I used to fix all the stuff around the house that I could fix. Uh, and if it's something that's over your head, you know, usually I'd start to try and then call somebody, call in reinforcements. You if, just uh, fixed your mom's fridge the other day. I did. I took her fridge apart because mm -hmm. it was leaking water. <laughs> and Thanks to it. YouTube. You know, YouTube had a video of like the exact model fridge and how to fix it. <laughs> it was a piece of cake. So it took me like an hour. So here's some just some ideas to get your wheels churning for small stuff to cut. And this is stuff. You know, you probably know, but you might have been ignoring or you might um, be like, that can't make a, as big a difference as I think it can. But it really can, especially if it's a monthly recurring bill like cable. I mean, none of us millennials have cable anymore, but definitely share that Netflix password um, or cancel Netflix. Mm, I know bold, bold words are being shared. Sign up for a but... 30 day free trial, cancel it later. <laughs> Change your email every <laughs> single month for new a new Gmail 30 account. day free trial. Get creative. Uh, but definitely check out your phone bill too. Uh, there's a service called Mint Mobile that's $40 a month for two lines. We use Verizon, it's $60 a month for uh, three gigabytes each of data. And yeah, just shop around for plans that work for you, for insurance, for phone. And definitely while you're in your debt for debt pay down mode, outsource, um, cut the outsourcing, cut the gardening, the cleaning, the nail salon, the haircutting, the pre-prepped meals, 
and just insource, you know, and that saves a lot of money just right off the t right off the top. Um, definitely cut shopping, obviously. Um, but with that, like with a lot of things with money, there's an emotional and mental component, and you really need to focus on the mindset and the habits and patterns before you just try to like brute force yourself to be like, I'm never going to go shopping again for the rest of the year or something like that's not going to set you up for success. Yeah. So. We don't want to just like rely on willpower. No, because it doesn't work at some point. We're not so, good at it. Yeah. No. So big stuff to cut. We talked about, you know, some of the inertia around these things, but specifically housing, you could move to a cheaper part of town. You could potentially downsize if you have a big house. Um, I mean, we just downsized into a van, <laughs> sold all of our stuff yep. and probably liquidated like several thousand, thousands of dollars of stuff mm -hmm. out of our house, um, which a lot of it wasn't really getting used mm -mm. very much. Um, we were just moving around. Yeah, we'd moved it several times. <laughs> kayak. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Now look, now I'm in Colorado and I don't have a kayak anymore. It's the middle of winter. It's, you would not be using your kayak right no, now. No, no, no. But yeah. in the spring, it's kind of easy. You could buy a duplex with the intention of running out one side. This is a super great strategy. Kind of goes hand in hand with house hacking. Um, there's a lot of different ways to house hack, but like buying a multifamily property is a great way to do it. You got your own space. You get a rental property out of it and you have someone who's helping pay your mortgage at least like reducing the cost of not paying it outright. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty sweet. So here's a little snippet on to how we saved 20K a year house hacking. We intentionally purchased a house with uh, four bedrooms and three baths and rented out rooms in the house. And this basically eliminated our housing expense because we made enough in the rent of the other rooms to pay our mortgage. So yeah, this obviously will not work for everyone if you have a family or if you're you know, in a certain situation where you can't, you can't have like a shared house. You can't have a shared house. Yeah, it's totally understandable if this won't work for you. But then you can look at like multifamilies mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's other ways to like get creative about it. Yeah. Like Airbnb, some stuff, you know. Yeah, Airbnb whatever. is a great option. Um, our friend, the Financial Panther, makes like $2,000 a month Airbnb his room in Minneapolis. So there's always options if you're willing to be flexible. And uh, we have a YouTube video on our channel on your future if you're more interested in learning about this strategy. So after all this expense cutting, you may still run into a point where it just isn't enough. I mean, you can mm. only cut your expenses so low, you have that bare bones, you know, Budget, flooring yeah. limit, and you can't really go beneath that. Even if you optimize your housing situation yeah. and your car and your, you know, reduce that, taking a bus, carpooling, whatever. Yeah. There's always, there's going to be a point where you need to increase your income. Yep. So. Let's go to that let's next to that. slide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep this rolling. So how to increase your income. We always recommend and we go into depth with, in this, in the course, with starting with your current job. So that is the first lever to pull. Uh, are there ways you can increase your income at your work? Can you ask for a raise? Can you pick up a few more shifts? Can you negotiate a larger bonus? Optimizing this current employment, employment is really the best place to start because they're already paying you. So they already like you. For sure. So definitely look at your skills too. What are you good at? Are you good with cars, excellent at sewing? What skills do you have that others would be willing to pay for? And you can use those skills to start a side hustle or open a little biz on, you know, evenings and weekends. For sure. And then you can always look into the gig economy. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's super like time flexible. Yep. Um, I mean, it's not very scalable, which is the one thing if you're trying to yep. like, replace your income eventually yeah. with a business or with doing something else that you're passionate about besides mm -hmm. whatever you're doing for your day job. Um, gig economy, probably not going to get you there. But the gig economy can give you a little boost mm -hmm. and help you pay down your debt faster or reach a goal faster. Yeah. So driving for Uber or Lyft, watching dogs with Rover, VipKid is teaching English, um, Postmates and DoorDash or delivery services. We touched on Airbnb. If you have access to yeah. that, um, can seriously drop your housing expense or just put some extra 
money in the bank. Totally. So all legit options. But, you know, once you've maxed out the differential between your income and expenses, you're ready to pay off your debt. So how do we do that? Let's start first with the types of debt so we really understand what we're dealing with before we... For sure. So we just wanted to kind of explain this because we'll give you some of these um, mm -hmm. in the following slides. So yeah. unsecured debt versus secured debt. This is like your credit cards versus your mortgage. Yeah. Your credit card doesn't have anything linked to it. If you don't pay your credit card, the credit card company is not going to come and repossess anything. Mm -mm. Secured, if you don't pay your mortgage, bank takes your house. Yeah. So unsecured debt typically is a much higher interest rate because of that. Mm -hmm. It's more risky for them. There's no, uh, there's nothing securing that yeah. debt that they can come take if you don't pay it. Mm -hmm. So secured, like your house, a lot lower payments, cars, lower payments. Because if you don't pay it, they just come take the asset from you. And yeah. that's that. We want to talk about revolving versus fixed. Uh, again, you're going to use credit cards as your revolving debt, personal loans, things like that. Um, you can spend money on it on like a line of credit, and then you pay it off, and you continuously can kind of do that over have and over. debt coming in and out, uh, and money moving in and out of that account. Mm -hmm. Fixed or installment debts are more like your student loans. You pay your payment on your student loan. You can't go back to your student loan. Yeah. servicer and be like hey i need that 200 bucks i have an emergency expense <laughs> they'd be like lol get yeah, out of here sorry yeah so i mean that's important because revolving instruments can kind of be used to float you through like a tough period mm -hmm. if you have an emergency expense whereas fixed or installments can't so once yeah. you put the money into the student loan it's not coming back out and we'll talk a little bit more about what we consider good debt mm -hmm. versus bad debt yeah so Assets and liabilities are the two things you need to understand the difference between. So assets are mortgage or a business loan, basically things that add to your net worth, whereas liabilities are credit cards, cars, boats, things that depreciate and basically cause you financial hardship. So, sure. so assets are good, liabilities are bad. Assets put money in your pocket or increase in value. Mm -hmm. Liabilities take money out mm -hmm. of your pocket or decrease in value. So where does student loan fit in? Student loan debt, good or bad? It depends. So <laughs> if you haven't taken on any student loan debt yet, if you're getting ready to go to college or getting ready to go back to school, mm -hmm. it's really important to evaluate if you should take on more and mm -hmm. the return on that investment. So consider it like an investment in yourself. Yeah. So if you're gonna go spend $100,000 to go to school, are you going to see the benefits of that mm -hmm. in your paycheck after you graduate? Yeah. And is it, does it make sense to spend that money or would you be better off going another route yep. or for, to a cheaper school? Or mm -hmm. it's something that we really kind of lack right now mm -hmm. in financial education. And yeah. because, you know, when we're going to college, we're still super young. We don't really understand money. Mm -hmm. We don't understand loans like what all that really means. Yeah. But nobody really looks at their career and be like, oh, I'm going to do this because it's going to be a great ROI. They're like, oh, yeah. I'm passionate about this. I'm going to go to school to do it. Mm. And a lot of people are suffering under some pretty serious student loans yeah. while making not enough money to pay them off. Yeah. yeah. So. We didn't really cover it. If you already have it, yeah. on, if you already have student loan debt, doesn't really matter whether it's good or bad. Yep. You just got to deal with it now. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's true. And you do have a few options, uh, which we go into deep into the course. We have a whole flow chart and a whole spreadsheet that can really make it clear to you as to what option is the best for you. But we'll briefly touch on them right now. Income-based repayment, public service loan forgiveness program, uh, refinancing and paying it off or paying it off without refinancing, and we'll go into uh, a little bit of those, so. Yeah, so pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Income-based repayment, basically you make payments based on how much money you're making. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of calculated above poverty level. Um, this can really lower your payments for a lot of people, but you could be paying for a lot longer. Yeah. Um, there is a forgiveness, which is what the forgiveness like clause in there. So if yeah. you pay for 20 or 25 years and you still have a loan balance, they forgive the rest of it. Yeah. Um, in a lot of cases, it depends on your income. You might have paid off your loans pretty much already by 20 to 25 years. Yeah. There's public service loan forgiveness, which is if you're working in the public sector for government or mm -hmm. um, you know state, local, state, federal government, all pretty much qualifies. 
um, something that's in the service of the public, the government has a program that will forgive your loans after 10 years. Yeah. Um, and then there's a note in here about teachers. You can get forgiven in five years if you're working in specific areas, low income schools. I forget exactly what the terminology was, but yeah. um, you can but only get really 70, need teachers. Yeah, 17.5 forgiven though. Right, right. So yeah, you must enroll in these programs to be eligible, which if you've seen any of our YouTube videos on this, a lot of people just automatically assume they're eligible and don't submit the proper paperwork every year to confirm verify their enrollment and it, verify right. it. So you really have to be on top of this. You can't just assume it's going to happen. Um, it's so a thing to be aware of. Yeah. If you, depending on if you refinance or not, this will affect your potential forgiveness. So while you might... It might look like a better loan when you refinance. If you plan on using the forgiveness program, don't refinance. Um, and something to be aware of, whenever you your loans are forgiven, you have to pay taxes on all of the money that was forgiven as income. Um, so yeah, and there's also some different employer and state programs that vary. But one thing to definitely watch out for are scam companies that call you on the phone or email you promising to get rid of your debt for you. That doesn't exist. And um, they are trying to get you to pay the money, more money than you would have paid um, otherwise. For so sure. They're basically like, hey, pay me $1,000 right now. Yeah. I'll like process this thing and I'll make your student loans go away. Yeah. It's not true. You'll pay them $1,000 and they'll just go. Do through. the same thing. Yeah. So... Just to be aware, if the laws change around public service loan forgiveness and uh, income-based repayment, those already in the system will most likely be grandfathered in. Yeah. I don't see them doing something to not let people be grandfathered in, but, you know, we never know. So that's why I say most likely. <laughs> but which debt do we pay off first, babe? Let's yeah. go through all of the types. So this is a super common question because if you have a lot of debts, people don't know where to start. They mm -hmm. say, where should I be putting, um, you know, any of this extra money I have each month? If you have extra money, mm -hmm. hopefully you do if you're decreasing those expenses and increasing that income. Woo -woo. But we're going to touch on the debt avalanche, the debt snowball, and the debt tsunami mm -hmm. methods. These are all pretty popular in the personal finance world. You've probably seen them on YouTube or TV. So we're going to talk about what these mean and why are they all weather related? <laughs> That's a question we still don't have the answer to, but we'll get into it. So what is that debt avalanche? The debt avalanche is mathematically based and basically it recommends paying off the highest interest debt first. So whatever interest rate is highest, that's what you go for. doesn't matter the balance. So debt snowball is a psychology based method. It recommends paying off the lowest balance debt first mm. and that's so you can get this like quick win and mm. feel like you're making progress you like knock out one debt and then you have a little bit extra money to put towards the next one mm -hmm. so it helps keep you motivated because you're going to pay off debts more frequently yeah um Make by you starting feel like the smallest one. yeah this guy looks pretty happy with his snowball so but we'll see a tsunami so this is emotionally based and it recommends paying off the most emotional debt first so the example we always give is if you have a debt towards a family member or something that is really like causing you stress in your life, it recommends paying off that first to get over that stress and you know, right get that get out of that. your life. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're not having like awkward Thanksgiving conversations. Yeah, no one wants that. Thanksgiving's yeah. already awkward. Yeah, it can be tough. <laughs> so what do we subscribe to? We stuck with the weather theme and made up our own. <laughs> and we call it the dead tornado. Mm-hmm. Good work, sound effects crew. You're welcome. So it's basically like the debt avalanche, but we have one caveat. Most people who teach the debt avalanche say, hey, you need to set this emergency fund right away. It's going to keep you out of credit card debt moving forward. We don't really agree with having an emergency fund before you pay down your high interest rate debt. And I know that might sound a little crazy, so we're going to talk about it a little bit more and just give you some more clarity. Yeah. So to emergency fund, yeah or nay, it really is the question that we asked. And when I did some math and kind of thought about it a little bit more, mm -hmm. it just didn't make sense. He has a big spreadsheet on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
true. Love spreadsheets. <laughs> he does love spreadsheet. It's a weird, it's a weird thing, but we love you them. know engineers. Yeah. So mathematically, <laughs> when you have high interest credit card debt, you'll pay off your debt about ten to twenty percent faster by not keeping an emergency fund up front. So yeah. How this works yeah. is if you think about the interest rate that you would be making by having this cash sitting in a checking account, which might be one percent to two percent if you're killing it <laughs> and in a uh, online account if you're on like a brick and mortar wells fargo you're probably getting like a tenth of a percent yeah but on the other hand you have this credit card debt that's sitting out there that's charging you 20 percent, 27 percent per year to have that money on the balance so you, you'd be much better off mathematically taking that cash that's sitting in your checking account and throwing it at that 27 percent debt and paying mm -hmm. it off because that's like a you know if you have a thousand bucks in there then that's a thousand dollars less that you're going to pay twenty seven percent interest on. Yeah. And if you need money, since that's revolving credit, which we talked about, you can always use it to get you through an unexpected expense or an emergency. So you don't really need the emergency fund. You're already in debt, so you're not keeping mm -hmm. yourself out of debt. The best thing to do is just to help try to get yourself out of debt as fast as possible. Yeah. Which is making the most optimal choices with all of the money that you have mm -hmm. and paying whatever debt is charging the most interest. Totally. So here's just an example uh, with a debt snowball. We just created a fictional scenario. This is the spreadsheet she's talking about. Yeah. Just a snippet. <laughs> just a it. snippet. And you don't want to see the rest unless you're really into spreadsheets. Then Matt would love to show it to you. I'll show you, yeah. Um, <laughs> but basically, we compared uh, the three debt snowball, avalanche, and tornado, which is avalanche without an emergency fund. And in this case, you pay off your debt six months faster and um, pay almost ten thousand less interest. So it's pretty significant, significantly important which way you pay off your debt. For sure, and those months are from the one next to it. So yeah, that much is four months faster than the debt snowball, mm -hmm. and then the debt tornado is basically the debt avalanche without an emergency fund is six months faster than just the debt avalanche alone yeah and i think i did that with a one month emergency fund so not a lot yeah so another question we get a lot is whether or not refinancing your student loans is the best option and or credit card debt or credit card debt yeah refinancing any of your loans refinancing any of it yeah one thing to really be aware of is your credit score needs to be high which we'll talk about ways to boost your credit score in a bit um but we go into depth in it in the course um but you have to have a high credit score to qualify for favorable options um if credit card debt exists balance transfers are a great way to really gain momentum on paying um, off your debt and that's where you transfer the balance to another card with normally a 0% interest promotional period, normally like 18 months. Um, but before you do that, I would recommend always trying to call and arguing with your lenders for a better rate. You never know until you ask, and they want to keep you as a customer. So if you tell them, I have this balance transfer for 0% for 18 months, I'm going to go do that and leave you, um, they might decide to give you a good rate, a better rate or something. Yeah. So. I mean, they might work with you because basically they're going to be going, they're mm -hmm. going to get no money after that. Yeah. Right. I mean, no yeah. interest after yeah. that. So sometimes, yeah, they'll work with you. And if you are considering a balance transfer, we have a balance transfer spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. We have a spreadsheet for that too. And it's important to look at that because there are fees associated. Mm -hmm. So it's not yeah. just like black and white that you should always balance transfer. It depends on your interest rate, yeah, before and after, um, your promotional period, how long that is, and like how quickly you're paying on your debt. And yeah. how fast you can take advantage of that mm -hmm. um, promotional period to not get down. So make sure you think about it first. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Use, it. Use some evaluation. So what affects our credit score? Um, there's a lot of things that affect your credit score and it might seem like gibberish to you, but we'll try to break it down. For sure. So credit utilization is basically how much credit you are using that you have access to. So if you have a $30,000 uh, credit card debt right now, but you have $100,000 available to you in credit cards. Credit limits. Credit limits, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that's a 30% credit utilization. Right. So... Uh, that affects your credit score in the higher 
you utilize your credit, then the lower your score is. On time payments, of course, affect it. Uh, do you make your credit card payments on time? Do you make your mortgage payment on time? Average age of credit. So how long have your credit cards been open? How long has your mortgage been open? How long have you been making on time payments? Um, these things matter. Total number of accounts. So um, if you recently, you know, pulled a bunch of hard inquiries on your credit score, that's going to bring it down. And it's going to kind of show if you have a lot of accounts, it's going to kind of show that you might be unstable in your credit history. And yeah. So, I mean, I think the total number of accounts is they're looking for like how many other lenders trust you with money, right? If you have mm -hmm. a bunch of different credit cards mm -hmm. and a mortgage and a car loan and all this stuff and they're all being paid on time. Yeah. Then they're like, okay, this person can handle. It's trustworthy. It's trustworthy. Yeah. Um, kind of what you're talking about. If you're opening a lot of accounts yeah. to like increase that number of accounts, what you'll do is you'll drive your average age of credit down a lot because mm -hmm. you'll have like all these accounts that are two months old, they get averaged in and that can bring your score down. They all affect um, each other. And yeah, she mentioned the number of hard inquiries, mm -hmm. the hard pull versus soft pull. If you're getting it alone, they usually do like a hard pull. Mm -hmm. um, that's like, you know, going and asking the, the credit unions for like this physical printout report of like all of your credit. Yeah. If you just want to do a score check on like Credit Karma, stuff like that. Discover, like Discover doesn't, yeah. All that, that's not going to affect your credit. Um, that's just like a little ping like, hey, what's my score? Yeah. And the credit um, bureaus don't care about that. They just ding you when they have to give out your entire history yeah. to a creditor. Mm -hmm. So how to increase your credit score? So that last slide was more or less in the order of importance. Mm -hmm. so like credit card utilization is huge for your mm -hmm. credit score. So there's something called a trade line, which is basically where you are added to another person's credit card as an authorized user that credit limit or available credit shows up on your credit score mm -hmm. on your credit report yeah so a trade line is like using one of these to boost the available credit to you so the best way to do this is from family if your parents or aunt uncle someone who has um pretty good credit and like a high credit limit on a card mm -hmm. can add you as an authorized user they don't have to give you a card they don't have to like you're not gonna be able to spend any money they just yeah. need to put your name on there um you will benefit from their good credit. So yeah. it transfers that available credit limit to you, mm -hmm. which can really help make a big bump in your credit score. Yep, for sure. These trade lines are also for purchase online. Um, there's a few companies, basically they network people with good credit, mm -hmm. um, with people who are trying to increase their credit limit and they'll get you guys linked up and make sure everything, um, everybody gets added and all that stuff is legit. Yeah. So you can also pay on time if you're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that will help, but it's kind of a long road, right? You need to um, build up a history of paying mm -hmm. on time. It's not pay your credit card on time one month and your score Goes magically up, yeah. bounces super high. Um, and if you have no credit and you're just starting out um, and you don't obviously look for trade lines, but you can also start with a secured credit card um, to build your credit. Uh, these have a lot lower interest rates. They're easier to get um, because you have to keep a certain amount of money in a bank account, mm -hmm. which basically equals your credit limit. So it's kind of like a debit card, but it goes on your credit report, which a debit card does not. So mm -hmm. if you're just using a debit card in your checking account, you're not building credit. If you're doing something with a secured credit card, you're at least building some credit. So in the future, you have access to some more financial instruments. Totes. So yeah, that's some, just an overview of you know some things we talked about why a credit score is important is because it does give you more options to refinance or consolidate or balance transfer so For that's sure, why we get, touched on credit score yeah you'll get better loan terms you mm -hmm. get lower interest rates better like payment terms yeah all that stuff if you have a good credit score yeah so it is important yeah and doing those things can really help you pay up your debt faster mm -hmm. sometimes so our last step to financial freedom, drum roll please. Projections. So what are projections? This is really a super visual and pivotal piece for our students and clients. And it really opens their eyes to show how everyday money choices affects the long term. So a lot of times we spend 10 bucks every day here and there. 
don't realize that that drastically impacts the date that we'll be debt free. Even though it doesn't feel like a lot of money every day you spend that, it really makes a huge difference. Sure. It also helps you answer how much you should be saving. Mm -hmm. We talked at the beginning about kind of reverse engineering your goals. Yeah. So we start with your goals and obviously this would depend on your goals. Mm -hmm. And then we look at, okay, if you want to be there in five years, what do you need to do now? Or like yeah. how much do you need to be saving to be able to achieve that? And we try to fit your spending into that number. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, you're like, wait, no, that's too tight. Mm -hmm. or it's too close to the bare bones kind of floor I have. Then you just know you need to modify your goal timeline yeah. or work on increasing your income and kind of furthering that gap between mm -hmm. expenses and income. Yeah. So there's some other ways to do it, but projections really help you understand that in looking at the long term mm -hmm. and kind of plan for the future. So at least you know, you're not kind of just floating along right. like, oh, I'm gonna be able to do this in five years when really you can't unless right. you make some changes. Mm -hmm. This helps kind of make that very real and visual. Totally. So the US average for saving is 6%. But the crazy thing is by saving 10%, 20%, 50% of your income, it shows you how quickly you can reach early retirement. And it's all based on your savings rate. It actually does not have to do with your income or your expenses. For sure. That makes the assumption that you're going to spend the exact same amount in retirement mm -hmm. that you are making in... That you're spending that now. That you're spending now. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. That you're spending now. Um, so if you're spending $30,000 a year now, you'll spend $30,000 a year in retirement. Yeah. But you can see at 6%, that little bar with the United States on it is about 50 years. So mm -hmm. you go from 6% to 10%, you cut 10 years mm -hmm. off your working life. Go to 20%, you can double it again. You go down another nine years to 31. If you get all the way up to 50%, it's like 15 years, which yeah. is super short. This is all based on, yeah, basically if you're saving that much, um, this is how much money you'll have in your bank account that can theoretically survive, like survive market fluctuations yeah. for the rest of your life. So just an example to kind of get your wheels turning about what increasing that savings rate and kind of having a focus on that can do for your retirement goals. But mm -hmm. this also, you know, applies to any other big goals, travel, saving for weddings, yeah. all that stuff. Totally. So we talk a lot about this in the course, but when should you be investing? One thing to be aware of, and we tell this to you now because it's so important, is that if you have a 401k match at your work, always put enough in your 401k to meet the match. That's basically free money. So it's really important that you try to do that as much as you can. For sure. That's like a 100% return on your money. Which, which you're never gonna, happens. You're not going to find that <laughs> anywhere else, so you should just do it. But besides that, here's how the order of things <laughs> should go. We have this laid out really nicely in the course to show you, but here's a little overview. Yeah, so we definitely recommend tacking all your revolving debt. And we say revolving debt because like I said, that almost always has the highest interest rate. Mm -hmm. So credit cards up in the 20%, personal loans are easily in the teens to 20s. Yeah. So getting that stuff taken care of first because it's costing you a lot of money and interest. Then once you get all the revolving debt taken care of, we're gonna establish an emergency fund because prior to that, we were using that revolving credit mm -hmm. as our emergency fund if something crazy came up. But yeah. now that we have that paid off, we don't want to take out more. Yeah. So now we start an emergency fund. We recommend two to three months at least, uh, but more depending on your risk tolerance and your situation. Uh, if you have a family, if you have you know fluctuations in income in your work, you might want more. Yeah. But two to three months is not a crazy long time if you lost your job and had to try to find a new one. Mm -hmm. So. That's what we recommend. After you get your emergency fund established, you can pay off your remaining debts. We definitely recommend tackling anything over 7% first. Um, and then after that, you have a decision to make because historically the stock market returns 7% um, per year on average over a really long time. Mm -hmm. So looking back like over a 30 year period, you take out all these ups and downs by averaging it out, it's about 7%. So now after you've paid down to around 7%, you can decide if you want to continue paying on your other debts, like maybe your mortgage or car loan, some stuff that's lower um, interest rate, or if you want to start investing in the stock market or yeah. other investments, however you decide to invest your money. Yeah, so that's a little overview. Um, 
But what portion should you be investing? As we said earlier, we definitely recommend investing up to the 401k match. But while you're in debt, you really have to decide what your risk tolerance is, your values and your goals, because there's no right answer for everyone. But going through the steps in our course will really help you to have clarity on what your next steps should be to achieve those goals. Okay, so we wanted to talk about why, <clears throat> excuse me, why you showed up today. Mm -hmm. You want to feel in control of your money and on the right path to achieve your financial goals. Heck you also yeah. want to have a realistic and sustainable debt pay on plan that leaves you feeling empowered. You understand where you're going, when you're going to get there. Woo -woo. Maybe you wanted to just learn how to have happy and healthy money conversations with your spouse or partner. Yeah. We know money is the cause of the majority of divorces in the country. Mm -hmm. So this is super, super important to us. Yeah. But whatever it was, we know it wasn't for the cheesy stock photos of avalanches <laughs> and snowballs and some of our punny jokes. We're so funny, though. I'm sure they came for the jokes. So really, we want to share with you what we've achieved um, is really not that special. We do work really hard, though, and I will tell you that we have had a lot of privilege, and but we've also had a lot of setbacks and we've had a lot of struggles. Uh, but we always pick ourselves back up and uh, get back on the horse. Um, the thing that is different now for us financially is that we understand what strategies and techniques lead to financial freedom and we practice those in our life. Um, so we also have tools to have healthy conversations around money and um, that has led us to have some really hard conversations in the beginning and still now we still practice those sure. um but it has improved the quality of our lives significantly and we wouldn't want it any other way um so yeah just saying we aren't that special we work really hard though and if you are really serious about paying down your debt then you are gonna have to work hard too it's not a magic potion for sure no one's gonna come pay your debt tomorrow no but you can totally do it Mm -hmm. if you put some of these things in place, yeah. really buckle down and just kind of set yourself to it. Yeah. So. so we want to teach you these strategies and techniques and this mindset and skills that have really helped us. And that's through the course that we've been talking about, mentioning this entire time, Own Your Debt. And what is it? So this is going into everything we've covered just in so much more detail. Mm -hmm. It really is the complete strategy, system, techniques that we use to manage our money and mm -hmm. go from living paycheck to paycheck to saving 70% of our incomes. Yeah, It's structured in a 10 module online course, um, videos along with workbooks, yeah. worksheets, spreadsheets, yeah. uh, <laughs> flow charts, you know, all of these resources and tools that we created just to help it be that much easier to follow yeah. and help guide you through it. So mm -hmm. because of that, it can be completed on your own time schedule yeah. from the comfort of your own home. You can fit it in when you have time for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're here to support you yeah. on your journey. So it does include each of these three sections as we've talked about today and mindset section that pulls up those unhealthy habits and replants healthy ones. Budgeting section that helps you to minimize your expenses comfortably though not you know in a way that feels like sacrifice but also maximizing your income in a realistic way uh, the projection section that gives you your own personalized debt pay down plan and leaves you empowered and in control and all of this is used through google sheets so it doesn't require any special software just a gmail account which is free and we also use personal capital which is a free money software to track your money all of it's absolutely free, so there are no other expenses. Um, but what benefits would you get from joining? So you'll be able to master your money stories that mm -hmm. have been unconsciously defining you. Mm -hmm. We talked about those a lot at the beginning. They're running in the background. We don't even notice that they exist. Mm -hmm. And they end up controlling a lot of the way that we behave about money around other people yeah. or with ourselves you're going to get a clear and laid out path to financial freedom and debt pay down mm -hmm. um, through our projections section. You get a sustainable, realistic budget that works with your lifestyle and your specific goals. We talked about some different budgeting styles, the one that we prefer, but we help you get set up 
and running with one that's going to work month after month and that you're going mm -hmm. to stick with and use to help you reach your goals. And lastly, with the money skills and habits that are going to serve you for the rest of your life. Yep. The earlier you do this work, the better it is because then you have time working for you and not against you. So yeah, we also have tons of bonuses to really enrich your experience, private community in Facebook to hold you accountable. We do have weekly, definitely every other weekly, um, but actually most of the time weekly lives, uh, Q and A ses sessions in the Facebook group where we answer all of your questions, professional level spreadsheet templates. As we mentioned, Matt is a professional spreadsheeter, weekly and monthly money meeting framework to really set you on the right path to have those healthy conversations with yourself and with your partner around money and calendar reminders of when you should be checking in with your money. Uh, so you don't miss a beat. Yeah, we have even more bonuses if you act quick because we're just yeah. reopening registration for this. It'll mm -hmm. only be open for a short time. So yeah. if you purchase within the next 48 hours, we're giving away some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a coaching call with either me or Allie, $175 value. Yeah. We'll definitely work through your money habits and patterns, breaking mm -hmm. down unhealthy ones and replanting new ones. They contribute yeah. to your financial success. That's really where we like to focus on with the first coaching call mm -hmm. because we're right at the beginning of the program. Yeah. The second thing is another coaching call about two months into the program. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're going to talk about more nuts and bolts, projections, mm -hmm. um, any hangups you've had that we can coach you through Yeah. in a more personal one-on-one -on -one situation than we yeah. can do in the Q and A's. Um, so that's really good to help keep you motivated and overcome any hurdles that have come up as you've worked your way through yeah. most of the course. And that's if you joined by Friday. So just a heads up. Um, the total value of everything is enormous. So we'll sum that all up. You can read each line individually, but $742 is basically the total value of this. And we've been told we should charge more for our course, but we charge 167 because we really want to make this affordable to everyone. And we realize that the biggest, you know, thing that we, question we get is like, why should I invest in your course when I'm already in debt? And the answer that we have to that is the best investment you can make is in yourself. And when you and the skills that have got you to being in debt aren't the skills that are going to get you out of debt. And so investing in yourself to help and to plant those healthy skills will set you up for a lifetime of success and really $167 that is worth it. You can find that in your budget. For sure. So, we definitely wanted to make it accessible because we yeah. know that a lot of people that need this information mm -hmm. are struggling with money. Yeah. And 167 can feel like a lot. Yeah. But the value over the next 30, 40, 50 years of your life oh my gosh. is unreal. Yeah. So. so this is the lowest price we've ever offered it at. Um, I'm not sure if we'll raise our price. We've been told we should, but right now make sure to jump in because this is definitely a really good price. So how do we enroll? You can either go to ownyourdebtcourse.com or at the bottom of the ownyourdebtcourse.com slash live page, there's an enroll button. Um, but yeah, when you sign up, you get immediate access because we have already recorded and created the entire course. So you can work on it on your own schedule and you'll get support through uh, the Facebook group. For sure. So. So that's what we wanted to touch on our refund policy because mm -hmm. we want you to feel confident in your investment yeah. in us. And if we don't help you, we don't deserve your money. Nope. So we're so confident that we're going to give you 60 days. You yeah. can basically do the entire course in that time for <laughs> sure. So. You can basically do the whole thing, get all of the information. And if you at the end feel like, you know what, this really wasn't worth it. I didn't get anything out of this. I don't think this is going to improve my yeah. financial situation in the future. Let us know and we'll refund your money. Totally. No questions asked. Yep. We think it's that good. So don't worry. Um, we will give you your money back if you don't like the course. Yeah, for sure. But caveat, you have to tell us why. <laughs> yeah, because so we, we want to make it better. It. 
So let me get my little fancy timer going because you got 48 hours if you want those fast uh, coaching bonuses. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments and we will hit them up. You might want to check YouTube too because it goes live on YouTube as well. Um, but we just wanted to share this one testimonial too because this was super powerful. We just got this last week from our... So we launched this course for the first time in November and um, we had Sarah as one of our founding members and she said that through our student loan refinancing spreadsheet, she saved almost $5,000 in interest over the life of the loan. And yeah, she says that in and of itself was worth the cost of our course. So if you want to save money, then you might have to spend 167 to, to save yeah, $5,000. The, the goal of the course is definitely to have it, you know, pay for itself. And more. And yeah. way, way more than yeah. that. Yeah. Quickly, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. She probably saved that much per month mm -hmm. for the rest of her loan. If not, yeah. you know, double or triple that per month. So yeah. 167. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> I was like 5,000. I'm like, that's a lot. Dang. <laughs> um, so my computer died. So I can't look at the questions. Whoa, we are hot mess then. But if we see any of your questions down there, we will type them out and respond to them within the chat box and get back to you. Otherwise, make sure to enroll now at ownyourdebtcourse.com. Um, we're going to show our really pretty faces really quick. Yeah. And I mean, if you have any concerns, any questions before, definitely in chat box. You can also email me, um, matt at ownyourfuture.com. Whoa. Stop. Stop. Stop screen sharing. There, there we are. We're back. <laughs>